Hello everybody and welcome to a Blender tutorial. <clears throat> so this Blender tutorial is going to be a start to finish tutorial on creating a game inside of the Blender game engine. Now the reason I'm making this tutorial is because often when I look on the Blender artist forums where people ask me about Blender uh, and making games, uh, usually their first couple questions are how can I make a first person shooter or an RPG, uh, which are two uh, in my opinion, very difficult things to do if you have no idea what you're doing. Uh, and most people approach this think it's, thinking it's not going to be very hard, but more often than not, um, it is really hard, and uh, people don't really know what they're doing when they start off. They, they take on a project that they think is going to be a lot easier than it turns out to be. So this tutorial is for those people uh, who, or maybe you're, uh, you've made uh, other games, but now you want to make a different kind, or maybe you just want to expand your knowledge on the Blender game engine. Uh, so this tutorial, I will be teaching everyone how to make uh, a first-person shooter from start to finish in Blender. This will include um, a single player uh, with different levels uh, and a multiplayer uh, with co-op, so it'll only be two people. But you can take the stuff you learn and apply it to your game and uh, do different things with that. So the first thing I'm going to do, as always, is grab everything and delete everything. Uh, now this scene, I'm going to call it Loadout. Now I'm going to save this Blender file under my desktop. I've made a game folder called SS Undead, and this is going to be called Loadout.Blend. And the Loadout is where all of my items are going to be kept. So I'm going to go into Orthographic View, and the first thing I want to do is my game takes place on a cruise ship where uh, zombies uh, attack you, and you play as a security guard. Um, so the first thing I want to do is I'm going to customize my interface a bit. I like having the properties right there and the UV image editor right here. That's, that's what I like to have. And down here I like to have my logic editor. Okay, cool. So now what I can do is I can press N and we can bring in some background images for reference. So over here in my other tab I have three images that I'm going to use for reference. So I'm going to save this image like so save this image like so, and this one's actually just going to stay right here because that one is just so I know what the other side looks like. So I'm going to bring in three images that I have. Okay. Uh, this one here is only for texturing reference, so I'm going to put that off to my other screen here. This one here is for modeling reference, and this one here, uh, you couldn't see this one but you'll see in a second, is for the laser, or sorry, the uh, uh, the light. Okay, so I'm going to go into SS Undead and reference. I'm going to grab this image, and this is my modeling reference image. And I'm going to turn, <coughs> sorry, that opacity up all the way. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a uh, cube. I'm going to grab it and I'm going to put it right over here, and uh, I'm going to turn the uh, I'm going to go into edit mode and grab this side there and I'm going to delete these at vertices and add a mirror modifier okay uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm also going to turn on uh, file user preferences uh, I'm going to turn on screencast keys so that you guys uh, can see what I'm doing a little bit better. Anyway, we're going to go back here and I'm going to be making this gun in a couple of different parts. Uh, you can do it however you want. If you know how to model a gun and the episode is out, you can go check out the other episode. Uh, Uh, but uh, for those of you who don't know how to model, uh, this could be a useful tutorial. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a couple of loop cuts. And uh, I'm going to use these loop cuts as a guide. I'm going to start bringing them up to kind of match the uh, curves of this gun. Okay? And something I'd like to do is if I press 1, 
I'm in the wrong view. So I'm going to rotate this by negative 90. Uh, actually, let's rotate it by 180. So now if I go to the front view, that's where it should be. And it should actually be right there. So it should, this is this part right here. And now if we go into this side view here, so control three, it should be right around there. Uh, so now we can go one and three, I'm sorry, control three, and it's looking pretty good. So now we can go back into edit mode here And uh, grab this guy here and this one I'm gonna bring it out to about here and then there uh, and start bringing out these loop cuts here um, the other way you can model is with curves some people prefer to do it with curves I am NOT one of those per people uh, I don't mind modeling with curves. Uh, it's just when I started using Blender, I started modeling with uh, actual uh, meshes rather than, than curves, so it's just what I'm used to. Uh, so if you have been using Blender for a decent while and now you're just getting into the game engine, because that's actually what happened with me, I started off with animations. Uh, for an old YouTube channel of mine where I made Minecraft videos and I uh, used it as a way of making intros and animations for Minecraft. Uh, in that case, you may be experienced with, with Blender, just not with the game engine, and uh, that's where these tutorials can really come in handy. Uh, so if you know how to model, uh, you can skip this video if you really want to, uh, but hey, who knows, you might learn something and uh, you know, maybe worthwhile watching. Uh, I know I like to to watch other people's Blender videos, even if I know what they're doing. Uh, even if I know, you know, for example, if I saw someone making a tutorial on texturing, I could go, well, I know how to texture, and I'm good at it, but, you know, maybe it's good to get a second opinion on things. Uh, so it's always good to uh, watch videos and everything and things like that. I'm just gonna really quickly plug my headphones in. I have these the wireless A50s and they just sometimes they uh they uh they mess up, they goof all the time. Sometimes they'll turn off on me and things like that. And uh yeah. Anyway, uh so if you look what I'm doing, I'm kind of actually not going all the way to the edge right here, and I'm not doing all these little bumps, and that's because we'll be doing those uh, in a different manner. Uh, we're going to be doing those very differently because uh, there's a couple of different ways to do them, and. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm just a little distracted by this. There we go. There's a couple of different ways to do it, and uh, the way I, I do it is a little bit easier. Uh, and it's a little less intensive on the memory of the game. So now we can bring this out here. I guess we really only need one loop cut. Let's look right there. Could add another one right there. Um, and the thing with the game engine, if you're not aware of this, is the more polygons you have, um, the higher, or sorry, the the lower your game quality is going to be. Um, you want when when making polygons, at least you want. Uh, pretty much everything to be as low poly uh, as you can when you're making a game because otherwise things start to get funky and they go and it lags and things like that so you really want to be careful with uh, with your polygon count uh,
and things like this. That's pretty simple stuff you can do. And just this little thing right there, that's not very high poly, but it'll add that nice little detail. And if you actually want, because you can see that looks a little weird with that smooth shading, uh, we can grab these and uh, just shade those to flat. And then, you know, it just adds a little bit of nice detail in there for, for everything. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to add this trigger guard here. And if I go right there, I can grab that and bring it down. And uh, I'm going to texture or to smoke here. And I'm going to make that a bit smaller because in reality, the, the uh, handgun thing for the Glock is about right there. That's the nice thing about having a reference is you don't have to guess it. It's it's you can see exactly uh, how big it's supposed to be or how small it's supposed to be. Um, the other thing. So I'm gonna just basically, really quickly give you a rundown on what we're gonna be doing in this tutorial. So in this tutorial, we're going to be uh, covering how to model and texture a Glock, uh, or this gun, and it may be a different gun for you. Uh, and in the next tutorial, uh, we will be covering making a character, uh, and, uh, rigging this character. So we're going to model a character, rig a character, uh, and, well, technically we're not going to rig We'll mod well, we're not going to model a character, we're going to model arms, uh, because, uh, like I said with this, <coughs> my apologies, <coughs> with this polygon count thing, is, uh, the more polygons you have, the laggier, laggier your game's going to be, and technically, if we made a whole character, it would be a huge waste of polygons, because we're never going to see him, because we're looking through that character's eyes, um, and so those zombies will model those and things like that, but other than that, there's really not much point in modeling uh, your character, the character you play as, uh, because you're never going to see him or her. Uh, but yeah. Uh, I'm going to grab this one here and just do an edge slide. Don't think it affects it too much. No, it doesn't. So I, don't even, I actually think I can just go like that and it'll look fine. Yeah, that looks good. Doesn't mess anything up drastically. That's good. Uh, one thing I am going to do is grab these corners of the gun here and bring those in just a little. Uh, put a cut right there. Because otherwise those just look a little funny. It may just be me, but I think it looks a little funny. I'm also going to grab these guys and bring them back just a little. Help make that just look a little rounder. Uh, not a huge deal, but it can help the look a lot. Uh, so it's good to just do little things like that. Cool. So now what we can do is we can go in here, and I'm going to grab that and that and delete the faces, and I'm going to add a loop cut through there. Now we can grab that one, and that one, and that one, and that one, and create a face. Actually, you know what we'll do is we'll merge them. Oops. So let's go merge at center. Merge at center. Merge at center. And then we can go merge at center. And merge at center. And now we have created this nice little uh, thingy bobber here. And we can delete those faces. And if we look into there, it looks good. Cool. So, and if you can't see, what I mean is now there's no face blocking this trigger. Cool. So that looks pretty good now. 
something I am going to do uh, is grab this uh, trigger here, or this trigger guard, and I am going to shade this to smooth because I think it'll look a bit better. And if not, we always have our command Z. Mm, actually, I like it smooth better. I'll be enough. Okay, so now what we can do is we can go origin to geometry, and that'll help make that just a little bit cleaner. So we can go shift S, cursor is selected, and I'm going to add a cube. And if I go into front view now, and what have I done to this thing? Okay, we actually don't want to do cursory uh, geometry yet, because if we do, uh, it's going to remove this mirror modifier. So we want to leave it how it is at the moment. After we textured it and everything like that, we're going to uh, remove that. But for now, it's good. So I'm going to add this pretty much right in the middle of this. You can see I'm a little bit off, so we can grab all these until that's in the middle. We'll use that as our reference. And uh, that looks pretty centered. So we can grab this and edit it and scale it down. And I want it to be about right here, but I am going to grab this and just grab that and lower it in a little bit. Again, just helping make that look a little bit smoother. And uh, just like, like the smallest detail will add so much. And that's why I love texturing. Texturing is my favorite part because you can add all those details that you just couldn't quite capture with the, um, with the, you know, the texturing, or sorry, the modeling. And I'm going to put a loop cut in that, loop this side, and add a mirror modifier. Is that what we need? Odd. Okay. Um, now what we can do, so I'm just going to get a sip of my drink here. I have a uh, nice lime juice right there. Lime and soda water. That's very good. Okay. So now we can go there, and we can make these lines right here uh, divot in a little bit, because you will see this is going to be our corners. Uh, where does that corner start? Right there. Uh, so we can put that in. Put that in, and that should be good. And we can also grab that. Now we can grab these guys and if we drag that in just a little that looks pretty good I guess it doesn't have to be would it look better if we did this no it would not so let's actually brag, grab that blah, 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 blah. grab that back a little and then this back a little and that I think looks <clears throat> I think looks pretty good. Uh, there we go. We can bring that back just a little bit and help that make that a little bit better. Help it make help it help it look a little bit better. I don't know what I'm trying to say anymore. Now we can bring it over here and we can actually see exactly where it wants this. So we were or I was, you guys didn't actually do this. You guys haven't made any mistakes yet. Maybe you have. Maybe you're doing this as I'm doing it. You've made tons. If so, that's fine. I make mistakes all the time. Cool. Okay, so that looks good. That's not perfect, but it, it really doesn't have to be. You can scale that zero on that axis, which will help make that a little cleaner. Uh, we can just go like that. That will make that a little bit better. Uh, we can go like this, this, and that should be good. Uh, whoa, what's rendered? What? Am I on? Oh, I actually need to turn that to Blender Game. Is that still there? 
That is so weird. I didn't even realize. I will pause the recording, guys, one second. Sorry about that, guys. Sock delivery from my mom. Okay, so we're going to turn clipping on. That's really weird. That's cool how you can do rendered. It's kind of like the cycles render mode, but in the regular blender render, because I don't really like cycles that much. Um, cool, so that's looking pretty good now. Uh, as we know, this right here is... Uh, it's gonna go like this, so this has to, uh, we can scale that, shift Y, or no, shift X maybe, oops, scale, shift Z, okay, I think we have to scale it like so, bring it down like so, scale it like so, bring it up, and then scale on the Y, so we can get it back to the to the right size. We can bring it in just a little bit. We do need to delete that face. Cool. So that's looking pretty good. Uh, nice little Glock right here. Um, looks pretty good. Uh, let's see. What else can we do? That's low poly. Oh yeah, that's right. Okay, let's go cursor selected. And in here, I'm going to shift A. Add a circle. I'm going to turn off clipping. Go into the vertices mode. Turn this down to 12 vertices. Uh, again, you can turn it down to any amount of vertices you want. I'm going to grab it all the way up front and I'm going to box select and delete those vertices. If we go like that, okay, sweet. And now I'm going to reselect these. Go to X90. I'm going to scale it down to the size of that thing. And just bring it out like that. And uh, let's go into front view mode here. We want to turn clipping on for this part. Like that. And that looks pretty good now. One thing I am going to do is uh, nothing in this world that I know of is two dimensional. So we want to. Actually, I think graphene is, but that's the side's the point. <laughs> Don't contradict yourself, Leon. Uh, okay. And we're going to just make this look a little bit cleaner. I'm going to add some loop cuts up here because that's a messy part. Uh, and I'm going to grab this loop cut here, extrude it again, Oops, extrude it, grab on the Y. Okay, so now what we're going to do, now that this is one part, ooh, right, okay, is I'm going to link this data and separate it by the material, or by the selection, sorry. And now we can go back into edit mode and scale that Y0. And I want to grab this and bring it back to about here. And, uh, oops. Okay, so now what we do is this is going to move on the Y axis, and that's going to look decent. It's going to go. Okay. Uh, this one we shoot and go, and this is going to be connected to it, so it's really good. Okay. And uh, yeah. So I'm uh, just going to take a drink of my drink again. Okay. So now what we can do is start adding textures for this. So I'm going to grab this guy here and hit all. And I'm actually going to go to this side view here, and I'm going to select as much as I can, and I'm going to go project from view. And if I scale this up over here, you can move it right there. And now if I go to front view, you can see the parts I have missed. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to undo all that until it's gone. Okay. And what I'm actually going to do is go with the side view here and only grab stuff that's on the side. 
Uh, so I'm gonna deselect. Uh, would that be considered? Okay, so I'm gonna select those guys. But I'm going to deselect that because that's technically part of the back. Uh, I'm going to select those two. Deselect that just because that's technically just a bevel. And the rest is good. Okay, so now we can go unwrap project from view. And this is my little cheap way of doing it. Okay. Now we can go select inverse. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab all these front objects. Okay. So all this front stuff, anything that I look from the front and I can see. Uh, and I'm going to go... Well, let's actually see if I can see any bit of this. I don't know what that is. Um, let's press N. We'll make this bigger. And let's go project from view. So now, what do I have? I've got this, which is just the front end of that. Okay, what's that? I don't know what that is. Let's, okay, let's delete this for to see. Can you hide it? What part is that? Something on the bottom. So let's scale that up. We can't scale it. That's so strange. It must just be a vertice of some sort. Odd. Okay. So now what we can do is we can grab everything here and hide it and see what we're missing. And uh, maybe we can remove those doubles. So we can do that because that always helps. Okay, but if I look at it from the back, we can grab anything that I might see and uh, and go from the side view. Select any of those things, and I go back here. Uh, and do we see these things? Are those part of our? I don't think it is. Okay, and now we can with this part go project from view. So if we select everything now, if we go unwrap, or sorry, if we go. Okay, so that looks decent. And now what we can do is we can grab all these things. So I'm going to grab this and scale it. And we have to make sure it's on this island. I'm going to rotate it and put it right there. And this piece here, I'm going to rotate like so and scale it. Or I didn't rotate it, I don't know why I said rotate. This piece here. It's gonna look like that. And now what we can do is we go to cube, or sorry, uh, to scene or whatever that camera is. And we go down to the bottom and go to bake. We also need to turn the shading to GLSL. I'm gonna go to ambient occlusion. I'm gonna create a new thing, and this is gonna be called block handle ale. We can bake that. And now what we can do is we can go image, save a cop 